want us to talk about this thing. Conflict resolutions. When is enough enough? In any relationship, there's bound to be conflict. to encourage you wherever you are to stay on you know sometimes you find things coming and you wonder where are they coming from and sometimes you feel you want to quit you want to give up you want to call it whatever field you are in i'm sure you've come close to call it a day let me give you a story that is given of 30 students who are pursuing molecular biology and they were coming to the end of a semester. The professor told the students that, guys, I know you've worked so hard and I know you guys care a lot about your GPA. I am going to suggest that or rather i'm going to give you an option i know in this class you just need a c to pass you've worked so hard and i know your life is tough out there i'm willing to offer grade b if you choose not to take this exam if you want to attempt to do to get better grade fine but all of you are good students and I'm willing to offer grade B so that you can go home. The students could not believe it. I have taught students who are very comfortable with the grade C. All they need is to have a pass. In this class, a lot of them woke up with the jubilation with the joy thanking their professor for being so considerate but a handful of students were left probably less than 10 and he made another offer and he said guys if you decided to, to, to sit for this exam i'm about to close doors i'm offering once again those who want to go, you don't have to sit for this exam. You are free to go. But if you don't, you'll have to do this exam. They stayed put. When those who are comfortable with the B, grade B left, the teacher closed the door. He opened, he took the, he took envelopes and offered them and he gave them and said you can now open your exam they took the oil envelope they opened it and when they opened they found that there were two sentences typed on the paper the exam paper two sentences the first sentence says this congratulations you have just received an A in this class. And the second sentence said this, keep believing in yourself. Two sentences. You have just received an A, grade A in this class. Two, keep believing in yourself. They waited, they dared, because they knew there was something better than what they had attained. Do you know how many opportunities we may have missed along the way for 
by looking or taking shortcuts, <clears throat> getting the easy way. Sometimes you may feel overwhelmed, overworked, and you feel like, no, 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 I can't do this anymore. But no matter how little energy you have, believe in yourself because life is not over until it is over. You could be dismissed and you might think this is the end of my life. They could finish you. In the political terms, they could even impeach you and say you are you're politically dead or business is about to close. And you may find that you wish you you would relocate to another world. But there's no other place to go. Stay on, my friend. Don't throw the towel. Because nothing lasts forever. You never know. If you stayed on, you could get grade A. Because you believe in yourself. Look at what has happened in life and how we have a uh, circumference, a lot of challenges we've gone through. And some of them you thought that you will not overcome them. Think about Corona. Can you believe right now, as we're speaking, this month is what? We are in November, 1st of November, 2024. Go back, how many years ago? Go two, three years ago. When you did not come close to anybody because of Corona, we had masks, right? We even forgot how people looked like, their lips. The women couldn't do the lips. I mean, they could take care of their beautification because it didn't matter then. It was a matter of life and death. We could not visit our friends. Corona deprived us relationship they they shut down you know flying from flying do you remember do you remember for us in the church we couldn't go for several months i would come to church and talk to empty views we ran out of food we stayed at home and people fought because they were not used <laughs> in staying together for such a long time. It was a very sad moment. When some of us in the diaspora could not go home and bury their own because of Corona. It's like the world had come to a standstill. And when we heard of one death, I don't know, in China, then one the other one, when we heard the first person in America, the first case, if you can remember, everybody was like, oh my goodness, we have somebody infected here in America with Corona, COVID, and before we knew it, a few months later, it was in our state, it was in our city, it was in our church. It got so close. Some of us, my wife and other nurses, had to go and take care of COVID victims. They would come dressed in the garage, they would take all these clothes out and they wash and we are looking at a distance just in case they got infected. But they had to go somebody had to go and be with those who are dying it looked like life will never be the same again and it appeared as so but lo and behold here we are you know the other day i was flying and i'm finding that we are seated next to people and some by the way the other the other guy near the window was coming <coughs> and for a moment i thought huh 
few years ago, that cough, that cough, and he's not covered, would have raised fly. But now nobody cares. Touching doors, going to the bathroom, it is like COVID never came. That was a moment. We don't have it. It's gone. It's gone. Of course, it can't keep resurfacing, but we've had all those injections and boosters and all that. What I'm saying is this, my friend. Until it's over, it is not over. Stay on. It might be dark now, but tomorrow, it doesn't have to be dark. I have a phrase I invented. Kukituka kutakea. Yani, when uh, dusk comes, know that dawn will come. So like these few students, stay on. Believe in yourself. Even when you've been dismissed and you're like, no, this is perishing. This boat is about to capsize. Remember the story about the wreck in the sea where Paul would tell people, please remain in the boat. Because when the boat was about to capsize and it was dancing and all that, people are thinking the best thing is to jump into the water. Why do you jump into the water and you don't know whether the sharks are waiting for you? He said, it is safer here in the boat. He said, stay in the boat. And even though the boat was just pushed around, within time, they got to the shore and they landed safely. Because a voice had come and an angel had assured Paul, saying, nobody will perish in this boat. I don't know what frightens you. I don't know who has dismissed you into a political oblivion. I don't know who has told you you are dismissed, you are useless, you can't make it. I don't know who is telling you you are old and your time is gone. You can't study, you feel embarrassed because you're going to go to class with the children, with the kids who are of your grandchildren age. Doesn't matter. Stay on. Stay on. Don't look for shortcuts. Mvumilivu, hulabivu, as they say. Stay on. And you have it, and you have it good. Tomorrow doesn't have to be like today. You will shine, even though it is dark now. Will you stay on? Will you stay put? Believe in yourself. It's a potential in you, because it is not over until. It is over. We may not necessarily be at the top there, but we could be the influence here. There are many ways we can participate in this life. You don't have to be a bishop. You don't have to be a president. You don't have to be the CEO. Your role is important. Fight for it. Advance in it. When you are threatened, stay put. Stay on. Will you? God bless you. And have.